I got to read the Bible. <laughs> okay, so it's uh, uh, my pleasure to represent the math department to, uh, to introduce you to Xiaoming Wang as our colloquium speaker. So Xiaoming got his PhD from Indiana University. Uh, he was uh, advised by uh, Roger Temam in 1996, and then he spent the next two years at New York University as a Quran instructor. He then moved to Iowa State, where he was a colleague of Brown Smith for a couple of years, I suppose, and was promoted to associate professor with tenure in 2001. And then he moved to Florida State in 2003. Now he's a full professor and the chair of the math department at Florida State. So his main uh, research interest is in applied PDE, especially those that arise in fluids and geophysical fluid application. He's also interested in turbulence theory, dynamical system, and numerical analysis. So today he's going to talk about flows in karstic geometry. So the floor is yours. Thanks, John. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, it's, uh, it's really nice to, to come here and meet old friends and uh, you know, get to know uh, new friends. Uh, John told me uh, I I uh, should make uh, the, the, the talk somewhat accessible to the general audience, so I have to, to uh, apologize to the experts. Uh, some of it uh, would be very uh, pedestrian uh, uh, until we get to the uh, very end of it. So uh, uh, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, is the. Uh, uh, Flows in a special uh, structure uh, called the uh, uh, cast. Uh, I'll, I'll give an out, uh, outline. I mean, introduction of the problem. Uh, talk about the main issues. Then uh, focus on the single phase flows in cast of uh, geometry. Then talk about the uh, uh, second. Um, talk about two phase flows in uh, in, in, in cast of uh, uh, Just gonna make it full 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 full. full. Okay, so so what is uh, the uh, what is the uh, 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 cost? Uh, here is a typical cost of a, a, a landscape. Uh, you have limestone or uh, solomite uh, because of uh, geological processes. Of, uh, uh, caves of uh, conduits would form uh, 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 within these rocks. So essentially, a uh, cast of it is, of a, it is that, this kind of a, a, a landscape. So you, you can think about the rocks with, the, with caves of the inside. Okay. Uh, and uh, a, a very well known uh, example is this uh, so called Minerva uh, cast of a, in the southern part of uh, France. Uh, so you can see these rocks and the, the caves over there. But Karst itself, the name comes from a region from uh, uh, former Yugos Yugoslavia. I forgot whether it's Serbia or Croatia. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, it's a beautiful place, uh, uh, similar to in China, it's a uh, 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 looks uh, very beautiful. Uh, it's Karst region. And, uh, so these are uh, uh, the, we, I have something close to home that is re uh, uh, related to cost. So uh, uh, a, uh, a local tourist attraction is the, it's called the uh, Wakala Spring, which is about 15 miles away from uh, Tallahassee. Uh, this is, uh, uh, according to the US Geological Survey, uh, the second largest uh, uh, freshwater spring in the world, so water uh, gushes out here. A uh, long, long time ago, before uh, Hollywood was really built, uh, people used this site to film <laughs> films. For instance, the first uh, Tarzan film was a film, part of it, <laughs> film right over there. So, so if you go, I don't know, uh, uh, Ralph, you, you, uh, your host ever treated you there. If, okay, so you have seen it. Mark, you have to go again uh, sometime, uh, you know. Uh, uh, look at it. <laughs> There's a place uh, over there, right? so uh, people film that, uh, <laughs> at the first Thailand, and also Airplane uh, 77, uh, but somewhere here. Uh, uh, so uh, this is uh, the area view. If you look at a cross section, what you see is uh, 
a, a, a conduit, a large chamber, and there are, all, of course, other uh, uh, underground rivers, channels. So uh, you have waters flowing uh, here, and also these are prosmedias, although they are, they, are, they are rocks, they are not that kind of rocks, they are different kind of rocks, these kind of rocks, uh, uh, limestones, they, they are still porous. Okay, so uh, waters also flow there, and uh, uh, why we, we care about that besides, uh, you know, uh, people film the things, and uh, the, the, the spring is nice, uh, but, but it, it's, it's a problem, we just avoid that. The reason that we care about these things, among other things, uh, is that uh, we, we, we draw uh, a large percentage of our, our uh, drinkable water from uh, these resources. So here is a, a, a schematic plot. Uh, so you have the so-called cast aquifers. So essentially, uh, a large cave underground, and then uh, water is uh, are stored there. But uh, this is not an isolated system. So they are sort of related to what's happening uh, above it, and uh, eventually uh, uh, related to what's happening uh, at the surface. So whatever we dump, uh, eventually would uh, affect the water quality down there. So, uh, uh, so that tells us that uh, we have to consider the, uh, the system uh, as a whole. I mean, flows, or uh, water flows uh, in, in these so-called cast aquifer, and the water flows uh, uh, surrounding it. So in particular, not in, in North Carolina, as you can see, there are a lot of uh, cast aquifers of, uh, around the country. In Florida, it's, it's, it's essentially uh, everything. So uh, Florida, uh, we, 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 we depend on uh, uh, cast aquifer, 90%. Uh, uh, the whole country is 40%. So it's a, it's a, it's a, a serious problem. And you see why uh, the problems will, be, uh, uh, will arise. Uh, for instance, you have a sinkhole, you have an underground river, you have a spring, and then uh, when it rains, uh, you have high flow here, then the pressure in, in this underground river or conduit will be higher than, uh, than the uh, pressure in the surrounding uh, rocks. So then uh, uh, water will flow to, to the surrounding area, and uh, whatever the contaminants that's on the ground, say, you know, your fertilizer or whatever, conduits of uh, the runoff goes into the conduit, you th thought it would just uh, go to the spring, but it would uh, some of it would go into the prosmedia around it because of this, uh, this uh, 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 sequestration of, uh, uh, process. Then uh, when the rain stops, uh, 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 the water table goes down and uh, then uh, the pressure uh, 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 gets lower in the conduit, so the pressure reverses. So, uh, pressure in the, in the ambient the matrix is higher than the, uh, the, uh, the pressure in the, uh, in the conduit, so flows would flow uh, from the matrix to the conduit. That's why even, if, even though it's not raining, you will still see water is coming out of the spring. Okay, so, uh, uh, but then with these flows, whatever the, the contaminants that's uh, uh, stored in, in the matrix will come out as well. And that's what we observe in, in our neighborhood, the, the Wakala Spring. Uh, what, uh, what's observed is uh, uh, excessive nutrients in terms of nitrogen, and the, the weeds will overgrow uh, in, in, the, in the spring. What do you call the matrix? Uh, it's at the post media, but in, 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 in groundwater, uh, they call it the uh, uh, matrix. Okay. So, uh, 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 this kind of geometry is not uh, just limited to, to, to groundwater uh, study. So here is an, another example, uh, a proton exchange membrane fuel cell. So in this case, uh, you, 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 you have, uh, in fact, two sets of uh, sort of ge uh, caustic uh, geometry. You have a channel here that have uh, uh, hydrogen uh, have, uh, uh, flows. Then you, you have a, 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 a porous media of a, of a layer, uh, and then over this here, you have another channel that you're pumping oxygen, and you have another porous media here 
In the middle, you have uh, a, uh, a, a platinum of, uh, layer that induces the, uh, the flow of electrons. Uh, you see, so uh, 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 for this side of, of, uh, of, uh, of the cell, the oxygen is flow here, that's what uh, fluid flow. But uh, in this process media, uh, the oxygen and the, uh, the hydrogen and the electrons would, would, uh, would uh, combine uh, and react to form of uh, water. So there are, there are uh, multi-phase uh, uh, fluid flows in this multi-media, I mean in this uh, uh, post media. And uh, uh, so, so although the setting is hard, uh, I mean the, 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 the whole dynamics is complicated, but the geometry, as you can see, post media, uh, post media, uh, conduit and flows uh, in post media and a conduit they interact with each other. Okay, so uh, so uh, we uh, we have these kind of geometries pop up uh, quite often. So what's the uh, the main issues? The main issues are uh, uh, of course you want to know uh, how the flows of uh, flow in in the conduit or the underground river. How the water flows in, in, in the matrix or the uh, post media, and more importantly, how do they uh, interact with each other? Uh, if you ignore the interaction, uh, essentially we all know, uh, know what, what's happening. So here is a, 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 a setup of the geometry that's uh, sort of easy to understand. So you have a conduit, and you also have a cave here, or so called bath, and surrounding it, it's all post media. And you have the interface between between the uh, the conduit and the uh, the matrix called the gamma i i for interface. Uh, so this is also gamma i. You have the uh, unit autonormal uh, to uh, to your conduit, and the gamma m is the boundary of your matrix, except the, uh, this interface part, and the gamma uh, c uh, is the, the the boundary of the conduit. Uh, except uh, the interface part. Okay. So, uh, 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 in, if we focus on the conduit or the or the case, we know uh, what's the dynamics of uh, the, the governing equation. It's the uh, Navier-Stokes equation uh, because uh, you know the, the fluid flows are underground. Usually, it's not that high, so incompressible Navier-Stokes equation. And if the uh, fluid flow is really, uh, velocity is really low, uh, then you can even uh, uh, forget about these nonlinear terms or the time derivative to uh, to uh, to deduce the uh, so-called uh, Stokes equation. So uh, for 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 the students uh, who have not uh, seen this thing before, the notations are the rho zero is the density of uh, the fluid. In this case, it's water, and uh, the the v uh, is the velocity uh, of uh, the fluids. So C just uh, uh, the subscript C represents conduit, and uh, but the T uh, is the stress tensor. It's related to uh, the rate of strain tensor D and the pressure uh, C, I mean uh, P C, and the viscosity uh, eta. So uh, this is uh, a baby uh, uh, fluid dynamics that you learned when you're talking fluids. They are related in this way. So uh, the stress tensor is twice. Uh, the uh, viscosity eta times the, uh, the uh, rate of uh, a strain tensor minus the, uh, uh, the, uh, the pressure times the, uh, the, uh, the uh, identity. Okay, so uh, this is the Navier-Stokes equation. And we treat it uh, as uh, incompressible. And uh, 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 if you, you forget everything else, the most natural boundary condition is the so-called no-slip boundary condition. So uh, fluid sticks to the boundary, so the velocity uh, is zero. Okay. If you, uh, uh, you, you, you agree this uh, is a good model for, uh, for, for flows in conduit, then you can easily check uh, the, uh, the, the, the kinetic, kinetic energy is dissipated, and uh, the rate of dissipation uh, is exactly uh, the viscosity times the rate of uh, strain tensor squared integrated over over the whole domain. Okay, uh, I emphasize this part because of, uh, uh, in the theory below, I will use this uh, to to uh, derive uh, 
uh, equation. Now, uh, this innocent equation of the uh, system of equations I presented here, uh, as most of you know, uh, has a, at least a $1 million behind that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, we will be focusing on the, on the simple part without the nonlinear term. Okay. And uh, for physical reasons, it's justified because my velocity is relatively slow. Small. Okay. So, and these two are uh, the two guys that, uh, uh, who are responsible for, for these two equations. Uh, a uh, Frenchman and an Englishman. The Frenchman uh, is a very good mathematician, but I heard that he's not a uh, particularly good uh, engineer. The bridges that he designed uh, didn't uh, uh, last very long. <laughs> now, how about uh, uh, flows in, 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 uh, in the post media or in the matrix? Then uh, uh, we, we have a set of equations called the uh, Darcy's equation. Uh, this uh, set of Darcy's equation can be derived uh, from the uh, Navier-Stokes or Stokes equation using various ways. So uh, essentially, uh, it, it says uh, the velocity uh, is proportional uh, to uh, to the gradient of, uh, of the, uh, the pressure in the in the post media and the, uh, in the negative direction, of course, with with a, with a constant or tensor k. The k is uh, the so-called uh, a hydraulic conductivity. Uh, if it is of a homogeneous isotropic media, k is a constant. But if it is inhomogeneous, then it's a, it's a, it's a function. If it is anisotropic, it's a, it's a tensor. Okay. Well, one question. Yeah. Why do you often cross some terms? Uh, okay. So so I included this term of, uh, 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 for, for the purpose to see. You know, uh, this is. Heuristically, a low order term, but if I include this, then you can see the energy is dissipated with the rate of this. Okay, so if I cross out this term, then it's harder for me to say uh, what's the energy dissipation rate. Okay. Yeah, but when you cross this term out, there's no time dependence. You're not doing yes, uh, yes, uh, I uh, won't be having time dependence, but in my theory below, I will be using. Uh, Pam has uh, a minimal dissipation principle to derive the coupling of this of, uh, Darcy's equation and of, uh, the of, uh, Stokes equation. So the interface boundary conditions, where do they come from? Uh, so in order to use Helmholtz principle, Helmholtz principle, as you will see in a few slides, it says uh, fluids are smart. They would like to minimize uh, uh, the dissipation of, of uh, energy when they uh, you know, have their configuration if the, uh, if the Reynolds number is small. But to, in order to apply that, I have to know what is the energy dissipation rate. I can just uh, say this is the energy dissipation rate, but uh, I think if I include this law or the term, then it's uh, easier to see this, uh, 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 this is the uh, energy dissipation. Right. Okay. And uh, 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 so this is low order uh, 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 than, uh, than, than each one of these. Uh, so are you looking for a stationary solution? No, uh, eventually it's not uh, uh, stationary. But uh, to start with, we can, we can look at the stationary. Uh, in fact, the two-phase uh, models has to be uh, time-dependent. So what is lambda? Say it again. Lambda? Uh, 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 chai. Uh, 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 this is ah, the porosity. Ah. Okay, so, sorry. So, uh, so uh, for, for notation here, uh, rho zero is still the, the, the density. Uh, Vm is the velocity or the Darcy velocity uh, uh, in the matrix. Pm is the pressure in the matrix. So the, uh, eta is still the viscosity. Cha is the porosity, so porosity is of a, uh, uh, how much, what's the percentage of void of space in your matrix? Okay. If it's one, essentially you have no structure, right? so you have free, uh, free flow. If it, 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 it's, it's zero, then uh, you have steel, <laughs> no, no empty space between uh, the, the structures. Uh, so that's, uh, that's chai, that's called a porosity. 
And the uh, ports media. The ports media you usually, it's a, it's a, that's a, a subtle issue. If uh, even if it's very porous in the sense of uh, uh, the pore space, uh, the, the portion of void is large, it doesn't mean fluid is easy to flow through that. You could build, you know, say you, you have one sheet of, of uh, steel that blocks the whole flow, like right? the volume is zero, but uh, it's, it's not uh, flowing through that. So, but, uh, but uh, the kind of example that I give you is, is uh, a sort of uh, a non-generic example. In generic case, uh, the higher the porosity, uh, the, the easier uh, for the flow to flow through the structure. How easy it, it flows through the structure is, is characterized by this permeability. So this is uh, 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 the capital pi. And the capital pi is related to the chi under generic uh, circumstances. That's what uh, I quoted here, common uh, Cosini uh, formula. Uh, okay. and if you know the uh, permeability, uh, and the viscosity, you can determine this coefficient here, so-called hydraulic conductivity. Uh, if you retain this, uh, this uh, low-order term, as you can see, the, uh, the energy dissipates uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, a rate of this. Okay, so, so this is, uh, uh, I will utilize this energy dissipation rate uh, in the matrix uh, later. So, so these are all well-known stuff. And this is Henry Darcy. Uh, he's an uh, uh, excellent engineer. So how do we couple uh, these two, uh, two systems? You know, both systems are very, very well-known. We know uh, they work very well. So one of the coupling uh, conditions is easy. You have to have a uh, conservation of mass. So that means uh, whatever leaves one region has to go into the other region. So the normal velocity has to be continuous. Okay. But that's easy, right? So the other uh, uh, why, interface. Excuse me. Yeah. Why isn't there a why isn't there a factor of five? I'm so sorry. You, suppose you've got water going from the conduit into the, the matrix. Yeah. You need a factor of five. Uh, but uh, that's that's true. So that's why uh, this is a, a sort of caveat that I listed oh, here. Right. So the, this uh, this velocity, Darcy velocity, is oh, not a, yeah. Okay. It's 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 not the the real velocity. The real velocity is the seepage velocity, which is, uh, which is this, right? Okay, so uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, but then if you consider seepage velocity, the area has to be uh, multiplied by chi as well. And that uh, mathematically, in fact, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not proved. It's a sphere packing problem. Uh, uh, can, you, can you show really, you know, uh, statistically this is true. If you have a porosity of a uh, uh, chi, then the area you slide, uh, it, the, the void area should be proportional to, to, uh, to, to, to chi. But it cannot be proved. It's not proved. <laughs> okay. okay, so uh, 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 one inter interface boundary condition is apparently not enough. Well, you count the fingers, right? You have how many unknowns? You have uh, in the pros media, you have the Darcy equation, so essentially the pressure is the unknown, right? And then uh, uh, in the conduit, you have the velocity that, that's unknown. So uh, even in, in two dimension, velocity is a vector, too, right? The pressure uh, in the conduit uh, it can be viewed as a function of the velocity. Uh, so you don't count that, but at least you have three unknowns. So in order to have a well-posed problem, you need about three boundary conditions. And smart people have thought about these questions before, so they know you, know, you, need, you need to have more boundary conditions, interface boundary conditions. So uh, one of the boundary conditions that proposed by uh, these two guys, uh, by Beavers, Gordon Beavers and, uh, and uh, Daniel Joseph, uh, uh, Long, long time ago, <laughs> is, uh, is this. So what does it say? It says uh, essentially, you know, uh, on the interface, uh, because one side is prose media, uh, uh, other side is free flow, so the fluid could glide uh, along the interface. 
sort of like you have uh, closed media. Think of it, you have water server over there, so uh, lubricates the boundary, so you can glide a little bit. So that's why uh, uh, this velocity of your fluid velocity in the conduit projected onto the tangential direction at the boundary may not be zero. Okay, so, uh, but how it, uh, when it glides, of course there should be a force that uh, resists this, uh, uh, this movement. So this is a uh, friction and uh, you, you say, uh, so the way that you write it is uh, 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 the tangential component of the normal uh, uh, component of the stress is proportional to the, the, uh, the, the jump in the uh, tangential derivatives. And then uh, you have the parameters of uh, uh, you know the numerator is, uh, you have viscosity there, uh, uh, and the denominator is related to to the trace of the the, 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 the permeability tensor. If it's just scalar, you just add it. Uh, B. Joseph didn't write it this way, but what they wrote is more like this. So uh, let's say hypothetically the normal velocity is zero. So what they said is negative of the viscosity times the, the, the normal derivative of your tangential velocity is proportional to the jump of the, the, the tangential velocity between uh, the conduit and uh, the matrix. So this, is, uh, uh, this is the usual friction norm, right? Uh, this condition has been uh, puzzled many of us uh, for a long, long time, uh, uh, essentially for, for 40 years. Nobody was able to do any analysis on that. But, but also, uh, in terms of uh, physics, it's also hard to, to, to do that, uh, to, uh, to, to work with that. So uh, again, uh, other smart people, uh, 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 this is another guy, Softman, uh, he, he said, uh, well, uh, looking at this, either this condition or this condition, the velocity in the uh, prose media is usually much slower or smaller than the velocity in the, uh, in the conduit. So why don't we just uh, omit the, uh, the red part? So with, if you omit that part, what you end up with is uh, this so-called Beavers Joseph uh, uh, Southman Jones uh, interface boundary condition. Uh, John's uh, his contribution was uh, you know uh, the first three guys all wrote it uh, without this term like this flat boundary. Uh, John's was able to write it uh, in terms of the stress tensor, so it works uh, much better. Uh, interpretation is better too. So I mean, the interpretation of this is just that the flow in the conduit tangential yep. uh, induces a shear stress. Yes. Yes. Matrix, so yeah. So the the is not something like that. So. Uh, the right so side induces a, a stress. Yes, yes, that's the bad. Yeah, that's the bad. Yeah, that's. So these are the people. Uh, uh, I don't have a picture of Jones, but these are the people who are responsible for for that formulation. So Daniel Joseph, uh, some of you probably know, he's one of the guys who is, who was a member of the National Academy of Sciences and a member of National Academy of Engineering. So he. <laughs> One amazing guy. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's his colleague uh, Gordon Beavers, and this is uh, 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 Philip uh, uh, Sutman. Uh, he's one of the uh, well-known guy in, in fluid dynamics, especially in terms of vortex dynamics and uh, fluid flow in, in post media. And they, uh, these two guys, not only proposed that the uh, Beaver Joseph uh, interface boundary condition, they conducted the uh, laboratory experiments verified the, uh, uh, this uh, interface value condition. They, they calibrated the, uh, these coefficients okay. so for different readings. Okay. So it uh, looks pretty good. Uh, but uh, still, it's, it's not enough. Uh, uh, why it's not enough? In 2D, this just gives you one more interface value condition. Uh, you still need another one. So what's the third one? Now it's a little bit more controversial. Uh, different people propose different theories. So one group of people uh, proposed that, that uh, the, uh, the normal component of normal stress uh, should be balanced in the sense of, you know, in the fluid, this is the normal kind of normal stress equals to the pressure in the, uh, in the uh, uh, post-medium. Okay, so 
So that's one of a theory. And then the other theory says, uh, but you know, the pressure should be continuous. There shouldn't be any discontinuity in, in, in the pressure. Uh, but, you know, which one is the right one? Right? So uh, then uh, there, there is a group of mathematicians try to solve the problem from a uh, 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 homogenization point of view. So uh, Jaeger and uh, Mechanic, uh, they looked at the problem uh, from the uh, homogenization point of view. They, they looked at 2D only, uh, uh, assumed that the, 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 here everything is periodic, periodic, and here you have to, to impose a, a uniform velocity, here you impose a uniform velocity. Then uh, they can show that uh, you can perform the homogenization the, 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 the procedure. And it turns out that uh, the, the boundary condition that you recover is this one. Okay, so it's not the, the not this one. Okay. Right. So, uh, so, so, uh, and the, the, uh, we use the, the uh, mean uh, by homogenizations is in what sense? So, uh, so multi scales. Yeah, you you so he, here you have free flow. Okay, can't do it. You have your Stokes equation mm -hmm. with the the the, 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 the boundary condition specified here and here, and the. the here you also start with Stokes equation, but uh, you know uh, in this periodic structure, right? So when the, uh, uh, when you you uh, zoom out uh, uh, in this part, so essentially you say shrink of uh, these sand of, uh, particles, of, uh, yeah, and uh, keep uh, the uh, the ratios uh, unchanged, then you can de derive an effective equation. Uh, an effective boundary condition. The effective equation, of it's course, it's the Darcy equation uh, okay. yeah, here. Yes. No, no doubt about it. Here you're not changing anything, so Stokes is still Stokes. Then the, the interface boundary condition uh, uh, is uh, what I wrote here. Uh, continuity of the normal velocity. Uh, uh, P. Virgils of Stuffman Jones, uh, that's the, 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 the the, uh, the uh, slip at the boundary induces a shear and stress, and then the balance of normal uh, stress. So that's in the limit, and but that's uh, under the assumption that uh, it has to be 2D. Uh, that, that these guys do not know how to do 3D. 3D is much harder. And uh, 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 you have to have periodic structure, and you have to have uh, impose of a of a, a positive flow. So if we use uh, uh, these, uh, uh, these, uh, this model with the uh, three uh, uh, interface boundary condition, in fact, we can uh, perform uh, perform uh, uh, numerical simulations. So here I cited a few uh, works. So uh, 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 Cotteroni and his uh, former students, this guy, I don't know how to say his name, uh, they started this business first. So they used the brutal force of a method solving uh, those problems. Then uh, uh, we followed up about with uh, 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 so-called uh, domain decomposition method. But that domain decomposition method is uh, probably different from people here uh, uh, understand that. What we meant is for our problem, we have two physical domains. Uh, one is uh, Darcy, one is uh, uh, Stokes. So the most natural thing to do is you have a solver that only uh, 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 only involves Stokes solver and Darcy solver, and we were able to design that kind of a numerical uh, scheme. Uh, so in that sense, the domains are decomposed, and uh, you know first order, second order accuracy, we, uh, unconditional stability. We have all of them, and here is a, 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 a numerical result that we have. So this is the lab result. Of, uh, uh, the lab result is poor. So I was talking to Mark. Of, uh, it took uh, our collaborator a long time of, uh, to, to come up with this. So it's a sandbox on top. It's a channel uh, in the bottom. And uh, uh, the red things are the dyes. So we let the water flow here. And uh, then the dyes will go, go into the sandbox. So you see the, the double hump of, uh, of, of uh, shape. And this is the numerical simulation. So uh, uh, 
according to eyeball measure, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> eyeball measure. <laughs> okay, so so uh, 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 so looks good. Uh, 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 here, I would like to ask the question: Is there a, another way to derive these equations, uh, especially the interface uh, conditions? I know that uh, that uh, Beavers and Joseph proposed uh, heuristically, uh, ad hocly, uh, verified it empirically using their, their experimental data, and then uh, derived of, uh, of, uh, using homogenization theory, but under very stringent conditions, which is usually not applicable in, in, uh, in uh, application. So uh, uh, the, the, the idea that we have is, of, uh, is applying uh, Helmholtz minimal of, uh, dissipation principle. So that's of, uh, uh, what of, uh, uh, Helmholtz said is, of, uh, you know, if you look at the steady flow, and uh, if the speed of the flow is small, small then uh, the, the configuration of the uh, fluid flow must be something that uh, minimizes the dissipation of the energy. Okay, so that's what he said essentially. Heuristic says the fluid is smart. It doesn't want to lose the energy. So to change it, its con configuration uh, to, to minimize the energy loss. And that heuristic is correct. And you can verify this is the, the, the correct uh, uh, idea, at least in terms of consistency with the, uh, the Stokes equation. So uh, uh, in the Stokes equation case, we, we already know this is the, uh, the uh, 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 dissipation rate of the energy. So eta is the viscosity, dV is the, uh, the rate of strain tensor. So this is how fast uh, the energy is dissipating, right? So you want to minimize this, but uh, you know, under the constraint that uh, the velocity, velocity field must be uh, incompressible. Uh, if you want to avoid incompressibility, then you just add the uh, Lagrangian multiplier. So then you do your math, you recover uh, the, 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 the uh, Stokes equation with the Lagrangian multiplier identified as the pressure. So that's, of course, we teach our, our first year of, uh, uh, graduate students. Right? So, uh, so, but the point here is uh, uh, Helmholtz the variational principle works. At least the way it's consistent with the Stokes, uh, Stokes problem. So what do we do uh, for our uh, uh, coupled system of uh, a Darcy flow in matrix and a Stokes flow in the carpet? So we need to know what, what is the, uh, the energy dissipation rate. So that's why I emphasize those two points. So this is the, the energy dissipation rate of, uh, in, the, uh, in the conduit or in the underground river. It's the same as the, uh, in the, in the uh, Stokes equation. And this part, is the energy dissipation rate in the in the matrix or in the prose medium that I also sort of emphasized, you know, uh, why I I kept the red term then put a plus because this tells me this is the uh, energy dissipation rate in uh, the in uh, the prose medium. On top of that, uh, because the fluid is gliding uh, uh, along the interface between uh, the matrix and the conduit. That uh, uh, slip uh, 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 induces uh, some energy dissipation. Okay, so this is the energy dissipation uh, 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 related to the friction along the interface. Okay. If it's no slip, then uh, uh, Vc tau, this is the tangential component of the velocity, will be zero. So this would, wouldn't be there. But if it's not zero, then this is energy dissipation. And it is subjected to to uh, to to uh, the incompressibility condition, and also the normal velocity must be uh, uh, continuous because of mass conservation. Then you do your mass. Uh, 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 sure enough, you 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 recover uh, uh, the Stokes equation uh, in, in the conduit, and then the Darcy equation uh, uh, in the prose medium. And the, the, the Lagrange multiplies the, are exactly uh, the pressures. Okay. And moreover, uh, the interface boundary conditions comes out naturally. So uh, 
uh, this is the, the, the beaver juice of uh, interface boundary condition. Just to write it in a slightly different form, the beta is this. Okay. And uh, th this is the balance of the normal the component of the normal stress. Okay. So these are the, uh, the, 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 the two uh, interface boundary conditions that we derive out of the variation of formulation uh, for the minimum of the, uh, uh, the minimum uh, dissipation. And this is what we impose, uh, it's a physically correct uh, uh, conservation of mass. Uh, so uh, so uh, uh, from this exercise of one phase flow, what, what would we learn? We say uh, uh, Helmholtz of the minimal uh, dissipation principle is a very powerful tool, at least the way we can recover you know, these interface boundary conditions using this principle. And uh, we have also derived the, uh, the efficient numerical methods to simulate the, uh, these problems. The more interesting uh, uh, problem is uh, the two-phase problem, because what I have shown you, the, the pictures that I showed you, I have a water table, for instance. Water table, then uh, it's the phase, uh, two-phase between water and air. So what do we do with uh, two-phase? Well, two-phase problem is uh, it's, uh, a much harder problem. So we just uh, started uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, process. So uh, uh, there are two, uh, at least two ways of, of approaching uh, two-phase problems, two-phase immiscible problems. So a way of doing that is of a, is of a sharp interface uh, approach. You say, uh, you know, the black and the white, they never mix, not even a little bit. So we have local experts here uh, work on these things. Uh, but I, I think you, you heard of uh, these things uh, quite a bit. So what I'm going to, uh, to, to, to do here is uh, uh, an alternative approach, so-called phase field of, uh, approach. So instead of saying you can only have black and white, I say uh, it, it is also possible to have gray. So, uh, in another word, most of the time, you know, here it's uh, just a white or black, so fluid one, fluid two. But uh, along the thin, very thin region, the two fluids could mix just a little bit. It's impossible to have completely immiscible one. This theory, of course, is not new. Uh, uh, smart people have thought about this a long time ago. That they are really uh, Laplace. And uh, 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 more recently, this uh, phase field of, uh, uh, approach can be uh, uh, formulated using a land, uh, Ginsburg the Landau type of uh, free energy. So you say uh, you, know, you, you impose a, a, a free energy that looks like this, where epsilon is, of a, is, of a, is of a small parameter. So this part of, 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 of uh, 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 free energy is a phobic part, so it wants to separate the two phases. If you want to minimize this part of the energy, phi has to be one or negative one. Let's say one corresponds to here, negative one corresponds to here. But this part also tells you, uh, you know, if you want to minimize this, phi better be a constant. Right? So this enhances mixing. So it's a competition between these two, but we put a small parameter here, so you see most of the time this thing is more important. So that's why we will see the uh, uh, phenomena mostly like this. And if you look at this energy, look at the, uh, the gradient flow of, uh, uh, in the L2 norm, then uh, you have the uh, Alan Kahn of uh, dynamics. If you look at the gradient flow in the, uh, in the H, H negative, negative 1 norm, then you have the uh, Cahelia dynamics of, uh, of, uh, related to phase separation, as uh, many of us know. Okay. So uh, 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 if you take this uh, uh, phase field approach, uh, there are also uh, 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 very well accepted uh, models, uh, uh, two-phase flow models in the conduit. So that's the so-called Cahelia-Navier-Stokes equation, or sometimes Navier-Stokes-Cahelia, depending on whom you like more. Uh, so, uh, so this is the, the, uh, the set of equations. So, uh, the mu c is the velocity of, uh, yeah, in the conduit. Uh, the, the, the t is again the stress of the tensor. Uh, uh, and the, 
the phi is the uh, the so-called phase field parameter, but that's about that specified here. Phi you know, essentially is one in one phase, negative <coughs> one in the other phase. So uh, uh, rho is the density. Uh, without this term, what you have is exactly the Navier Stokes equation. Okay, so this term is of a, is of a, uh, uh, the elastic forcing term or the capillary forcing term. But if, uh, instead of having it uh, located uh, on the interface, sharp interface only, now it's a distributed force. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, uh, the mu c is uh, the so-called uh, uh, chemical potential. It is related to to the uh, the uh, ginsburg landau uh, free energy. It's essentially the, the variational derivative of that. Okay, and you have a parameter there, uh, gamma, uh, because of, uh, the, the variational derivative does not have the dimension of of, uh, of chemical potential. So you have to have a, a fucking parameter over there. So that's uh, 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 the, uh, the Navier Stokes with uh, the elastic forcing. Then the phase field uh, has to, to, to evolve as well. So the phase field uh, apparently will be adapted by the velocity field. Right? And then on top of that, uh, 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 it, it is diffusive. So the diffusion is uh, uh, using the Kahn-Helia dynamics. Okay, so uh, the M is the mobility. Uh, uh, if you write this down, ignore this term, it's exactly the Kahn-Helia uh, uh, dynamics. So this is well known of a, of a, a set of a, a system, and many people derive this set of system uh, using different methods. Uh, I have cited a, a few uh, people here, and if you're interested in this review paper by Anderson, McFadden, uh, Wheeler, it's very readable. And Lohengrab and Chuskinowski has a, a very nice ma mathematical uh, derivation uh, from the basic of two fluids. I have to say a few of a few uh, word, a few more words. V is the order parameter, a volume fraction essentially. Then you can define the rho is really the mixture of the the, to the density of the mixture of the fluids. So what you 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 heuristically here is the formula, the density of the mixture. Uh, and uh, you can define the viscosity. Uh, uh, you, can, uh, you can believe the viscosity is also a function of the viscosity of two fluids and the volume fraction. Okay. And the small parameter of epsilon is essentially the interfacial width. So related to, to here, so uh, you see there is a blurry region, the width of it is the epsilon. And you can look at the balance of these two, see a uh, transition layer is an uh, is epsilon. Okay, so that's, that's, a, uh, 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 that's a phase field model for two phase flows in, uh, in the conduit. Uh, what happened in, in, in the matrix? In the matrix, uh, there is a parallel uh, theory, so it's uh, the so-called uh, Kahn-Hilliard-Darcy system. So this is the Kahn-Hilliard-Darcy system. Instead of having the Navier-Stokes equation, you write down the Darcy equation. So the Darcy equation is forced by a, 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 a elastic forcing term as well. And then this is the, uh, the Kahn-Hilliard equation if you ignore this uh, advection term. Uh, so you have this, and uh, but you, you can find the derivations of these equations uh, in these uh, uh, references, for, for example. So again, the, the question is about how do you couple these two, right? So uh, the way that we, we couple these two uh, would be uh, about using uh, uh, a generalization of, of uh, a Helmholtz principle. So a generalization of, uh, of Helmholtz principle that's suitable uh, uh, for this purpose, is the answer is the uh, extremal principle. So what he says uh, is uh, for fluids near equilibrium, uh, the config configuration is to minimize the sum of the total uh, energy the dissipation function and the, uh, the rate of the uh, change of the uh, free energy. So energy dissipation rate 
plus the, 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 the time derivative of the, 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 the free energy, essentially, that's what it says. Its original formulation, in fact, is not about free energy, it's about the, about the entropy. But, uh, the, you know, for, for the system, for the mechanical system that we work with, uh, it's better for us to use uh, free energy. Uh, uh, some of you, I mean, uh, probably most of you know of, uh, of Ansage's uh, reciprocal relation. It's derived by using his extremal uh, principle. So he, that's his uh, uh, Nobel Prize winning work. It's uh, derived by using this simple uh, principle. Okay. So uh, again, uh, uh, you can interpret the, his principle as uh, through the smart who wants to do little work. So minimize the energy dissipation rate, change as little uh, uh, as, uh, as possible in terms of free energy. Okay. So uh, so we can apply his uh, his uh, uh, his uh, 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 principle to the two phase flow of a uh, problem that we we have. Uh, just that we need to formulate. Uh, formulated to the, in the in the right manner. Uh, okay, so so I I I jump a little bit. To the, uh, uh, essentially, uh, 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 you know, you can uh, the introduce what are the rates. You know, uh, uh, the rate functions of uh, uh, one of them is of course the, the velocity. The other one is of, uh, is the, uh, the chemical flux or or chemical diffusive currents. Uh, there are natural boundary conditions. Then uh, there are also uh, uh, natural interface boundary conditions. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, uh, uh, conservation of mass across the, uh, the uh, interface. Even in this two-phase uh, 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 two uh, setting, you can de deduce that the, uh, the normal velocity has to be continuous. Just a simple algebra of uh, manipulation. So, uh, and then uh, the, the, the order parameter or the phase, phase field of a function phi uh, also needs to be uh, uh, continuous across the, the interface. Uh, uh, the dissipation functions, uh, what we have is uh, uh, we impose is the following. So in the gross media, this part is the uh, dissipation of the energy. Uh, exactly the same as in the, uh, in the uh, one phase, single phase model. It's just I wrote it in a slightly different way. Okay, the hydraulic conductivity is uh, permeability over, uh, over uh, the, the uh, viscosity. Then because of the two phase problem, you have the chemical diffusion, you have an additional dissipation. So this is the additional dissipation uh, that's due to the chemical diffusion. And likewise, uh, uh, the, uh, the dissipation function uh, in, the, in the conduit uh, uh, also changes. So this part corresponds to the uh, one single phase part. This also corresponds to the one single phase part. That, that's the dissipation uh, along the interface. This part is the dissipation due to chemical uh, diffusion. Okay. So you add this. Then you also have uh, uh, the, uh, the free energy. So the free energy is the ginsburg landau free energy. So the time derivative of uh, the rate of change of the free energy, uh, you can compute uh, for the conduit, for the matrix. Uh, you, you, you apply outside this principle, uh, you minimize uh, the energy dissipation within the matrix, uh, energy dissipation within the conduit. Uh, 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 rate of change of uh, free energy in the matrix, rate of change of uh, free energy in the conduit. Minimize this. You can ask a graduate student to uh, calcul calculate this. this right? it's, a, it's a good exercise. And uh, we derive uh, uh, this setup of uh, uh, equation. So uh, it's exactly this. Uh, uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, the the, uh, the uh, Darcy equation. With this elastic forcing term, and this is the uh, Cahillian, Cahillian equation with uh, a vacuum by the velocity uh, uh, for cross median. We recover the Stokes equation with the additional elastic forcing term, and this is the Cahillian rate the conduit. And the interface boundary conditions are the following. So uh, it, it, it turns out to be no surprise in this single uh, simple formulation. Uh, 
uh, this is imposed by, I mean, from, uh, from a purely kinetic consideration, conservation of, 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 of uh, conservation of, of uh, mass. You have the continuity of, of uh, normal velocity, continuity of uh, the phase field. Then the normal velocity, I mean, normal component, of, sorry, normal derivative of the phase field is also continuous. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, normal component of, uh, of the normal derivative of the chemical potential is, is also uh, uh, continuous. And then these are the, uh, this is the point is uh, meaning of the matrix. But this is the, uh, this is the uh, Beaver Joseph Sufferman Jones, uh, uh, the condition. This is the balance of uh, normal component of uh, the normal stress. So, uh, uh, so we have that formulation. And the, the nice thing about uh, this uh, formulation is one of the nice things, uh, a consequence, is an energy law. So we can show that uh, the, the, the free energy, the total free energy, uh, is of a, a, a decreasing function in time. And what's good about that, uh, the good thing about that is of a, now we can design numerical schemes that uh, respects that of a, uh, of a energy law. So that tells me if I do numerical simulation with those numerical schemes, I wouldn't have blow up problems. And that's a, a very desirable feature because we know for these interface boundary conditions we have experts here, it's re really, really stiff of, uh, 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 if you do uh, explicit method that it's so stiff many times it blows up. Okay. So uh, the numerical, we have the numerical scheme design and uh, we can also generalize the simple setting to more general uh, case, taking into account more physics. But the same numerical simulation is still underway. Uh, so to summarize, uh, we, we, we see that the uh, answer is uh, extremal principle can be used to, 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 to handle uh, this kind of two-phase flows in this cost of geometry. And the new model that, uh, that's derived uh, has uh, uh, at least one very desirable feature, energy law. And numerical schemes uh, can be designed uh, 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 that respects uh, these energy laws, uh, but numerics is uh, still underway. So there are a lot of questions uh, to be answered. Uh, for instance, uh, whether this system is well posed. You have an energy law, doesn't mean it, uh, it is well posed. Like maybe a stoke equation has an energy law, but a uh, million dollars there uh, if you can show it's, uh, it's a well posed. Uh, what's the relationship between this phase field model and the, the, the sharp interface models that the, uh, uh, people here and many other places work on? Uh, the, uh, the numerical method that respects the, uh, the energy law that we designed is not very efficient. Uh, is there a way to design more efficient one, like uh, what we did with uh, the phase, single phase one? Single phase one, we have decoupled the numerical schemes, Stokes solver, Darcy solver. You know, at each time step, uh, you solve each one of them separately, so you can parallel them. Then, then uh, after uh, you, you do your calculation, then the communication at the end. Can we do that? More importantly, how good the, this, this model is beyond the, the, the mathematical web postness. You have three parameters there. So uh, uh, can you calibrate the, these parameters in a good way so that <coughs> this is uh, this uh, experimental uh, uh, data? Okay. And you have uncertainties <laughs> uh, in both in terms of hydraulic conductivity or the, the, you know, the, the, the porosity and the, uh, the, the, the geometry of the conduit. So all these things, future. Thank you. Yes. So the uncertainty in geometry, that was a really hard one. I mean, that 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 plays hydrology at all levels. How how does one even start to approach that? Uh, the the naive idea that we we, we have is of uh, we say. There are only certain shapes that uh, we will consider. So uh, you know, uh, uh, just like uh, parameterizing a curve, uh, 
it's an infinite dimensional, but I, I say you know a few modes. <laughs> but it's, it's far from uh, the reality. So we, we are still uh, struggling uh, how to, to come up with, with something something reasonable. The, the double one potential that yeah. you use you must sort of have the full yeah. in this phase field of yeah. But, yeah. I mean it's not based on anything physical. You just said uh, that's that true. Uh, uh, there, there is an alternative uh, way of uh, using uh, uh, the logarithmic uh, potential. So, so uh, is there a justification in the context of Darcy? Uh, but uh, this is a uh, so the it's purely heuristic. Uh, formally, formally uh, I can take the the, the uh, forget about the, the coupling, the, the two phase Darcy. I can formally take uh, the sharp interface limit. Do my formal asymptotics? I recover uh, the mask of the bar, bar problem. So. Right. Two-phase sharp interface. Uh, yeah, well, I mean that doesn't depend on the choice of the double bond potential. Because well, you really uh, just get the two. Yeah, you you, you only need the but that's true. That's I mean, true. As long as they're located, right? But yeah, they, they, you have to have uh, two equally uh, two well with equal depth. Yeah. Just uh, the Ginsburg Landover uh, potential seems to be uh, a, a, a convenient one to work with. There, 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 are, there are many others that works. The, the, the logarithmic one is more appealing because you can sort of derive it you, uh, from, uh, from a statistical uh, uh, physics. But that one, in the small, uh, small re uh, regime, you can do Taylor expansion to cover the ginsburg Lando. But the application is not in, the, in, the, in that regime, so it's not self-consistent. Uh, yeah. Do you have an application in mind for the two-phase problem? What two phases are we talking about? What oh, well, so... so Air and water, the density difference is huge. So uh, then the, the phase field model, you can still have phase field model, but uh, uh, it cannot be treated as incompressible uh, at the interface. It's, uh, cannot, uh, uh, you have to use compressible model. In the compressible model, we are still working on it uh, on, 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 uh, on how to how to uh, uh, how to uh, uh, how to derive numerical scheme that uh, respects the the the, the, the uh, density law. So 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 this is relating to uh, the beyond the bosonic scale proposition. Yeah. yeah, I think you know this is beyond the time now. So let's thank the speaker.